very reason of protecting uh, the property that is behind. The other, the other issue is, and I think it's Condamine um, and, and potentially Theodore as well, we are actually minding some pets um, uh, for people. We're looking after their pets that couldn't be, uh, that couldn't be taken out at the time of evacuation. Um, we're very conscious that with people moving out of their homes, uh, whether it be, um, say for instance, in Emerald, just to an evacuation team within the town, but more particularly uh, places like uh, Theodore and Condamine, where the entire township has been evacuated, uh, people are uneasy um, about the security of their properties, and that's why the police have put extra resources into those towns, I remain there permanently, uh, to give them that comfort and security that they need. Uh, so we are very conscious of that issue and it's been addressed very well by police by putting and applying additional resources as required. So have you had any instances yet that you're looking for? Not that we know of what we know. Uh, I'm going to give the scale of this about how incredible is it that there's been no loss of life? Well, it's been uh, a miracle. Uh, we've, of course, lost uh, five uh, people in flood-related deaths um, leading up to the flooding which is occurring now, um, and we've seen too many people taking unnecessary risks. But thankfully, uh, at the last week or so, as a result of uh, the flooding which has inundated people's homes, we haven't seen any loss of life or serious injury. Uh, of course, there were um, small injuries here and there, but uh, we really do want to thank the communities for cooperating with authorities uh, for their own safety. Uh, that cooperation is absolutely essential, and that will minimise and hopefully reduce or eliminate uh, injuries and, and loss of life. What would you say the biggest contributing factor to that near loss of life is? I think it's been the cooperation of the community with emergency authorities. Um, both myself, the Deputy Premier, uh, the Premier, uh, the Treasurer is out today, and the Prime Minister out about uh, yesterday as well. I've uh, been meeting around talking to communities, uh, and I think they're very appreciative of the support that they've been getting, uh, but also, uh, as we've witnessed, uh, they've been very cooperative with authorities as well, and that's been a key part. Uh, of making sure that this uh, response phase goes as best as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. Can you provide an update on the issue with drinking water in the town site? Uh, it might be better to uh, <laughs> from maybe from us or the uh, yeah, else to do that for some detail. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. I can advise that in the meeting today uh, we received advice that the reverse osmosis plant is uh, going to be connected up in Bulby now. Uh, we're still also um, transporting water into Dolby at about a megalitre a day. And uh, there is also access now to the town hall. So the water supply in Dolby, uh, we are basically on par and meeting that demand. And they're still working on restoring the full water supply to the town. But we still urge people though, to be very responsible in using the water in the township of Dolby in the, the rate of consumption. Um, I would say to you that the rate of consumption initially, to the credit of everybody in the Dolby Township, has dropped to us at an all-time low, and uh, they've been very uh, judicious in what they've been using. Um, we have heard that it's picking up a, a little bit, and that's understandable, given obviously the return of the heat and the sun. But we're still urging people to uh, be very uh, careful in what they use and that there was a lot of people in Dolby working very hard at return, returning that water supply to its full capacity. And how is the water going in um, other areas such as Emerald and Rockhampton which are going to be completely cut off? Well, the advice from Emerald and Rockhampton is that the utilities in those uh, two places at the moment are fine. The power outages that we've uh, indicated to you, a lot of those are preempted to, uh, to uh, protect the light from uh, electricity and water. So at the moment, those two townships, or that city and that town, are doing, doing that well. Because um, only a few people so far in the evacuation centre in the town, and are there to 2,000 people to be there. Are they leaving enough time to leave their homes? I know that the uh, Rockhampton City Council are looking at the uh, Dolby Town Hall uh, and the Dolby Town Hall and the Rockhampton City Council have been very proactive in the local disaster management group in the briefing this morning. Uh, there has been a number of letter box locks and also door knocks in that area. I would encourage residents in town that are likely to be affected to look at the websites if they have uh, access to computers. There's a lot of very good information, especially on the Rockhampton website. And they are keeping it up to date and there are regular broadcasts uh, within the community advising them of what is actually the situation arising. But what we say is this, is that water will rise and it will keep rising uh, in that Rockhampton area. 
we do advise people that are in those low-lying areas and you perceive the price for the PR, then you need to consider about leaving sufficient time for an evacuation. Um, I don't have the exact number on self evacuation in certain Rockhampton. I the figure I gave you before into the evacuation center. It is better to be prepared for up to two thousand people than to be uh, up at the place. This morning the Mayor Brad Carter said that he's extremely worried about the uh, forecast of rain. He said that if they get any more rain that Rockhampton is just gonna be quite a serious disaster. How concerned are you about that? Well, I'm concerned about all weather um, activity in the area. Unfortunately, I don't actually have any control over that insofar as that uh, it's one of the natural events. What I would say too is that the uh, weather forecast is only predicting the showers. They're not predicting a heavy rain. Of course, I am concerned for the people of Rockhampton and all the communities that are in that area. And we, are, we acknowledge the great advice and, uh, and the high level of advice that we're receiving from the Bureau of Meteorology both in weather and hydrology. So uh, it's one of those cases where we have to wait, watch, and uh, be very uh, be very careful. We have seen unprecedented levels of flood. We have seen river heights go beyond what they have been previously recorded at. And I would say to you that in those regards, we are entering, in some cases, uncharted areas. And so uh, people will be reflecting back on to 2010-2011 with new uh, record uh, highs in relation to flooding in some areas of the state. Well, at the moment, uh, there is still ongoing planning in that, in that regard. Uh, the water levels have returned, as I said uh, earlier, to, uh, to the heights that they were when the evacuation had to occur. And until that, uh, that water starts to recede, which could be for a few days, in the next few days, uh, we won't be able to return any people to uh, that two theatre, and, uh, and then we need to re-establish the township and obviously in the current uh, And it looks like the uh, Thank you. Thunderbirds in um, into recovery mode already. Um, the water is dropping away very quickly. Um, uh, as late as yesterday, there was already half a metre drop in the uh, in the river height. Um, so we are very clear, clearly moving into that uh, restoration in a couple of ways. Yeah, I heard of those figures we've been we've been supported to the um that are affected by flooding and One of the key messages in, uh, for today is that uh, whilst a number of the communities the threat has somewhat passed, we, the, the risk and the threat of the floods coming into Rockhampton in particular uh, through the Fitzroy system and, and again down in the south of the state um, at Surratt, St George, Derrick we are really still in a very, very high risk environment and we would ask people not to be complacent about this that they have to listen to their radios, that they have to take notice of the media reports um, that will warn them of the of the impending uh, river heights and the risk in their particular community. Um, please, this is not the time to become complacent. We, we have been very fortunate today, and I think that uh, two major factors have contributed to that. As the Minister said, one is the great uh, community reaction to these, uh, to these very, very dangerous times. The second is the great planning that has been undertaken, particularly by local government and by uh, local district uh, command situations uh, that have allowed communities to understand their threats and to react appropriately, appropriately to them. That's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for We get you in contact with these